All right, so for pole zero placement, there's a few concepts that we must just understand now. Um, in your frequency domain, let me just get my brush thing. We know by now that a sine wave time domain can go to a frequency domain where it's a specific spike where that specific frequency is. So if you have a noisy signal, it might be the summation of two waves, a high frequency one and a low frequency one. So that FFT or the frequency domain might look something like that with definite two spikes, one for this one and one for that one. So if we look at this frequency spec, spectrum, the frequency spectrum, let me just get. So normally this is frequency and this is the type of amplitude and then we'll go from 0 hertz to F max, our maximum frequency and we should go on to Fs, our sample frequency. Remember our example, we go to 200, our sample frequency is 200 because it's 1 over that 0 0.005, that 5 milliseconds that will give us the, the 200. All right, so if we have, by now we know, if we have a certain frequency, let's say a 2 hertz frequency, if we have a 2 hertz frequency, it's going to be a spike here at 2, 2 hertz frequency. Same, and then there's going to be a ghost image. Let me just undo that. So roughly at 2, if this is 200, then this will be a 100, my maximum frequency. So at 2, there's going to be a spike. Sorry, I don't want to make the spike an arrow, I just want to make it this a spike. And then two hertz from this side, there's also going to be the ghost image. And remember also what I told you, normally software and lab view will just show you 0 to 100. They don't show you the ghost images. It's too confusing for the average person, I think. So they just show you this up until f max part. Understand this part. So now, what happens in a Fourier uh, in a Z pole a pole zero plot? So in a pole zero plot, mathematically, we're going to move to a circle. I'll just do a nice circle here. Going to put an axis through it here. Back to the brush. All right. So this is zero and 200. So that zero is that zero, that 200 is that 200. And then if max would be this side, 100. So two is going to be roughly here somewhere. So what we do is we take this axis, this x axis, and we pull it around in a circle. So this axis go around in a circle. So if your sample frequency, let's say for argument's sake, I'm just going to change color here. If your sample frequency is a thousand, it means this will go from zero to a thousand, and then that would be 500. So your whole stretch, if max is halfway, it's if max would be pi or 180 degrees, and your sample frequency would be 2 pi or 360 degrees. See what's happening here? So back to the original one of what our sample frequency was 200. We didn't do a thousand. So we know that this is F max. F max. This is Fs from 0 to 200. So 2 is going to sit here somewhere. That 2 is going to sit there somewhere. So it's important that you kind of understand that 2 hertz is going to be here somewhere and it goes all the way around. To 200. So if you still remember school mass y over 2 pi is equal to x over fs or your sample frequency. If you want to know exactly where that y is going to be, this is how you're going to calculate it. So we're going to do next is do the filter, the design of our filter on the zero pole diagram.